I feel like it's been a while since I held up the camera and actually is it raining it's raining but I feel like it's been a while since I actually held up the camera and made a video for y'all but I'm here to say what's up YouTube PJ back with another video for y'all and I know with everything going on in social media right now it has been a bit of a sad time in history right now oh 2020 is definitely gonna go down in the history books. I know that for sure. But for today's video, I have something I need to do with my car. I gotta get my mom's car out of the garage first. A few things have been up lately. The Miata is actually still turbo list it does not have the turbo kit installed on it yet here she is right here and that is because the autocross events that were for this year are unfortunately still being postponed are still being canceled should i say and so there's no need for me to put the turbo on it right now i've just been taking my time with that and not really doing anything with that but it will be coming soon enough uh i also had to order a lot of parts because i don't have a lot of parts for the turbo kit right now because they just weren't given to me with the turbo kit so i've been waiting on those too but as far as for dawn she is actually not drivable well not street drivable at the moment and i'm gonna tell y'all that in a few minutes <laughs> first y'all I did go on and get myself a new shift knob as you can see it's from DND well that's upside down but hopefully it's gonna fit better whenever I get a new shift boot which should actually be here shortly like probably today or tomorrow by the time y'all see this video it will be already here I can't wait to see how that fits on here but this is actually a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a little bit thicker, like width wise, but it'll be all right. And as far as the interior, I do have a few plans for those. If y'all have been following my Instagram, y'all saw what I kind of thought about that. But look at this. I have something else to explain to y'all. Y'all see the poke on my front tire? That was not actually there before. And that's because I've also put on the front wheel spacer on this side. And what happened is the lugs that I have, they're actually too short. So they bottomed out. And this wheel is actually not all the way on there, which is why I cannot drive it on the street yet. I mean, it's on good enough, but I just can't drive it on the street because obviously the lugs will back off and then bad things are going to happen. But I do have new lugs that are going to be here probably by the end of today. See, look at this wheel. Look at this one. This one looks good. I can't wait to get this fitment again. But I have new lugs that are going to be here by the end of today. If not today, then tomorrow morning sometime. And those are going to get thrown on the car and I'm finally going to be able to drive the car again. But I'm about to go ahead and jack this front side up so I can start changing out the studs on this side and get this over with. Alright, so now that I got the wheel off, I want to show y'all something right quick. This is the reason why I'm going to need extended lugs with the new spacers that I have. Okay, so you see how these spacers fit on here loosely like this. Okay, so this is the lug that I have, and this is the spacer that I had. So whenever it twists onto the lug, these spacers allow this lug, you see this? It allows this lug to go all the way through. So therefore it can tighten up all the way to the hub like well to the yeah to the hub like it normally does but 
this new spacer, it does not allow that to happen. It does not allow it to happen. And since that can't happen, that is why I can't use these spacers on these normal size studs because this cannot go all the way through and therefore it doesn't have enough thread to even thread on one or two threads. So that's why I had to switch to the new ones and the new ones are too long for these lugs and they bottom out before they even touch this spacer. That's why I had to change out both. Just a little food for thought for y'all. The next thing I have to do is take off this brake caliper and I'm gonna just take this off and sit it on a little bucket that I'm gonna put right here so it can be out of the way and I won't have to deal with that anymore. And oh, looking at these rotors, I need some more rotors because these have like, kinda like, you can feel the grooves a little bit in them and there isn't supposed to be a lip on this and there's a lip so I'm gonna need some more rotor soon. But I'm about to go ahead and take off, like I said, the caliper. Take this rotor off as well. And something I learned from the other side is you need to be very careful if you've never taken these off, like I haven't, or I don't think anybody has to be honest by the shape of this stuff. But you need to be very careful that you don't strip this Phillips head screw out of here because that can be a pain to deal with. I did it once on the other side and I'm not trying to do it this time. What you can do is you can beat around on the face of this rotor right here and it'll shock the rotor and the screw and they can easily break apart then. I had to learn that uh, the hard way. So trying to teach y'all before y'all make the same mistake I did. Boy, 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 I'll tell you the truth. This stuff was really like seized on there. And ooh, I mean, look at this. Look at this, ooh, all that rusty gunk. But now I'm about to just hammer out these lugs, or these studs, should I say? And then I'm gonna, t I'm actually gonna take the hub off. I found that was the easiest way for me to get the new lugs on, I mean the new studs on there, I keep saying lugs. But the easiest way for me is to just take these four bolts out. There are two on each side. And that's the easiest way for me. So I'm about to go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to get with the installation of these things. There's one of them. Alright, now I have the extended studs put in place and I have everything else back tightened up. But now it's time to pull these studs on through. What I have is a stock lug and as you can see they're kind of small actually. Oh, dropped it. I greased these up. I forgot to tell you. I did put some PB Blaster in these holes right here and on the back end of here to make it easier to pull on through. But like I was saying, these lugs are a bit small but they are softer than the studs are so this won't be a problem or anything but what i have here is i have just a socket regular socket but as long as it's a half inch drive you should be fine but i'm just gonna place this over here no biggie and this much of the thread should be sticking out and i have my regular size look i'm just gonna screw this on here until I cannot screw it anymore. And I can't screw it anymore. See, it's not moving anymore. And like I said, this is softer than the actual stud. So I'm gonna take my impact and start impacting this on. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna drill through the outside of the lug and it's gonna pull the backside forward. And once I do that, then I'm just gonna move on and do the rest of them. And then I should be finished with this. And I can put the rotor back on, put the brake caliber back on the rotor, and then put the wheel back on the car. And then I'll show y'all why the lugs that I do have do not fit. A 
few inches later. And just like that, you can see what I was saying. The stud came through the end of the lug, so that isn't a problem. It shouldn't be a problem anyway. This is what I did on the other side. And the back side of here is all butted up against the hook. So let me go ahead and do the other four and I should be finished. So if y'all didn't know what I meant by bottoming out, uh, all right, so I tightened up all of these lugs and look at this. Yeah, and they're all tight. It's because the face of them just isn't sticking out far enough. So I had to get some deeper lugs with, uh, and I got them with open ends just so this for sure would not happen again. But this is why I can't drive my car. But as of now, I'm about to back this thing up out of this garage. And then I have to change the spark plugs on my Miata. I'll pretty much be done with everything that I need to do today.